Hi there, welcome to the office chat of October 2017 and we will look into what has happened in the last couple of weeks in the field of terrorism and counterterrorism. Let's first start with very bad news, a, an, a major attack taking place in the streets of Mogadishu. Uh, a truck loaded full of um, explosives uh, was detonated in the heart of that uh, city, killing more than 350 people. I mean, Somalia has seen a lot of terrorism, a lot of attacks, but this was an incredibly deadly one. Uh, some have referred to it as the Somalia 9-11. And in a previous video, we already mentioned or we expressed our worries about a growing um, uh, level of violence in uh, Somalia, especially in relation to the group called Al-Shabaab, the jihadist, Al-Qaedaist group Al-Shabaab. And um, it's not clear whether they were behind this attack, but many people believe so. Uh, many people also after, after the attack in Somalia went on the streets saying, you know, they're protesting against terrorism. And again, incredible in this country that has seen so much bloodshed, um, people still going on the street, uh, daring to go out and saying no to terrorism. That's good news, uh, although yeah, the backdrop is a very deadly attack. Interestingly, a number of um, uh, uh, cities that have witnessed some terrorism uh, uh, in the past in the West have also reacted to this uh, attack. The Eiffel Tower, the lights went, were dimmed. Uh, they realized um, that, of course, they have been a victim of terrorist attack, uh, Charlie Hebdo, and after that the November attacks. And uh, they wanted to express their sympathy for the victims um, in Somalia. They're not forgotten. Same holds for Toronto, the Toronto sign uh, they, they put the, uh, the flag of Somalia on it. So people around the uh, globe were shocked about, about this level of violence in this war-struck uh, country, Somalia. What else? Um, let me look at the situation in Syria and Iraq. Um, in Iraq, Al-Qaeda, uh, oh, sorry, uh, the Islamic State is losing ground. The central part was conquered by the, uh, 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 the Iraqi army and its Shia militias. Now in Iraq, uh, IS only has um, still is still under con in control of the uh, area near the Syrian border. Also, an interesting development that we will maybe uh, look into next month is the um, uh, clash between the Iraqi army and the Peshmerga, the Kurdish for forces um, in and around uh, Kirkuk and other parts in the border zone between Iraqi-controlled part of um, Iraq and government-controlled part of Iraq. Uh, interesting and worrisome developments out there. Same holds for the situation in Syria. Um, IS uh, lost its so-called capital of the Caliphate, Raqqa, to the uh, Syrian Democratic Forces, uh, mainly supported by Kurdish fighters, supported by the United States. Um, and they're losing ground in the Deir Ezzor province, uh, so they're about to be wiped off the map in, um, in Syria. And that brings me to an interesting report of the Sufan group, uh, a group of experts, a think tank, um, that came up with a report, and I have to um, be precise, yeah, beyond the caliphate. That looks into the situation, um, uh, which is actually now taking place, where IS is hardly holding any territory. So what will happen? What questions are on the table? Well, there are some interesting observations there. The report estimates that there are about 5,600 foreign fighters that have returned to their countries of origin. Uh, that's quite a number of uh, foreign fighters, but it's, uh, yeah, the earlier estimates were about 20,000 total, so there's still a lot of people that have been killed and still a number out there. Um, and it also reports that in Europe about 30% of foreign fighters that have gone to Syria and Iraq have now returned. They say also that this, this is less than they expected, so there's no influx. Um, there are people returning, but not as many as governments expected. Even more interesting is the following observations. Um, it says that returnees so far proved a more manageable problem than initially anticipated. Uh, it says that, let's say, uh, the, the involvement in terrorist activities is less than expected. So it's, it's an interesting observation. Uh, it's a bit in line with early reports, um, historical studies into returnees, foreign fighters returning from, for instance, Afghanistan. I think of uh, a study by Janine de Roy van Zuiderwijn that looked into what happened to these people and 
we know from these historical cases that not that many got involved in, into terrorism. The problem is you know, it only takes five, six or ten people to commit a terrorist crime um, and, and, and a very deadly one. So no reason to relax, but it's interesting to um, re uh, see this uh, observation in the Sufan report. It also looks a space, uh, uh, it pays special attention to the role of women and children. That is an issue that many countries are uh, confronted with and find difficult to deal with. Many of, of these women say, well, you know, it was my husband who lured me or forced me to go with him to Syria and Iraq. Or some went there just to, to marry because they fell in love. Um, it's difficult to judge. So these women if in front of court often claim that they are a naive victim. Uh, and we will see a number of court cases in the coming months in uh, various European countries, among them the Netherlands, where these returning women are, um, there's trials against them. And we'll have to wait and see what judges say about that, whether they believe that or not, and, and what kind of penalties they have for these women who often come back with little children. Uh, and of course, a lot of cities, uh, local governments find it very difficult to deal with this. So we'll look into that in uh, the coming months. So that's it for this month. See you next month.